The Great Flood. Was it real? Was it global? And what really happened? Let's look at how it could have buried the creatures in rock layers exactly like we find them today. We'll find out more on Wonders Without Number. The lowest most rocks contain mostly marine fossils. Shallow marine fossils, as you work your way up, you get more animal, animal types that start showing up from land that were probably in the swampy areas. And as you go a little higher, you get the dinosaurs, which probably also were in lowlands. And you go higher, you get the uplands animals, uplands type terrain. You see different types of trees, different plants as you work your way up, just like you see different animals as you go up. So a lot of it has to do with the topography or the relief of the world. And it's the same pattern on every continent. So if it's the same pattern on every continent, then wouldn't that speak to some global event? Exactly, and that's the, the evidence I'm finding in the rocks, you know, from continent to continent, not just North America, not just South America, but you put together multiple continents, and I'm now on my fourth continent, and they're all showing the exact same pattern. Thousands of feet of sediments, all laid down by water, all over the earth in the same general order as the water went higher, covering the hills in each area. You see the same fossils everywhere. There truly is a global nature to the geologic column and to the, to the rock record for the flood. And so you see this yellow is one continuous blanket sand. Yes. And blanket sands are a mystery today to the secular to explain. How do you get a sand that covers that much area? Hmm. One layer. This is compelling because it's so massive. It yes. covers such a large area. This is not a trivial thing. And again, the secular scientists can explain mm -hmm. these types of features. Mm -hmm.